Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com and today we're going to be reviewing a hand against an absolute fighter in a $3,000 buy-in World Series of Poker events. My opponent in this hand was very active, very splashy, and well, we'll just see how this one goes. We get Ace-Queen in the low jack C. Clearly we're playing this hand every time. Ace-Queen is great. I raise and the fighter who has you know, 60 big blinds to my 35 elects to call. Pot comes queen 5-2, the opponent checks. So now, you want to ask yourself, first things first, what is just a good default play? A good default play in this scenario is to bet small with your whole range because the board is very uncoordinated. I have all the best queens and the big pairs. My opponent does not. Well, at least not. Ace-queen at least. It's probably three betting that. He could have an ace-queen though. But I definitely have the over pairs and he does not. So this is a great spot to bet frequently and small. I actually have a cash game course over at pokercoaching.com slash premium where I go through when to bet and how much. There are a lot of factors at play including the your position, the range advantage, the nut advantage, the board's texture, how well it connects with each player's range, etc. But I go through and break all of that down extensively for you over at pokercoaching.com slash premium in the flop section. So anyway, this is a great spot just to bet small with everything, and I'm not going to deviate at all because if I start betting bigger, maybe now my opponent just folds and never does anything ridiculous. So I do bet a thousand, and now the opponent raises, which is fantastic. Some people think, oh no, you got raised, I only have top pair. But uh, no, 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 we're very happy. We are literally never folding. So now we just have to ask, how do we get the opponent to continue doing something silly? And I think we have two options. First off, when I say silly, the opponent could easily have 4-3, the opponent could have a flush draw, the opponent could have a, a set or two pair. So it's not like we just have the super nuts every time. Um, in this scenario, we can either call and try to induce our opponent to keep betting on any turn. Clearly, we're not going to fold. Or we can re-raise immediately. Now, if we re-raise immediately, if we go all in, now our opponent just has to fold everything that's garbage, right? And I don't want that. I want my opponent in with whatever little bit of equity he has when he has a little bit of equity. So, I think this is a great spot to re-raise small. This could be to 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, whatever amount you think your opponent will view as you messing around as well. And it is very important, by the way, that when you are playing against players who are in there battling, that you get in there and you get involved. If your opponent thinks you're a super nit, then you don't get their action. You don't deserve their action. If you are a super nit who doesn't put a chip in the pot, then the loose, aggressive, wild players probably aren't going to try to bluff you all that often. But if you are in there fighting back with them a little bit and you just make sure you are you know, playing generally stronger ranges than they are, good things are going to happen for you. So anyway, I like clicking it back here. An actual click back would be 5,000. I usually like going a little bit bigger because whenever you go absolute minimum, that may set off alarm bells in some players' heads. And you really don't want that to happen. I also don't like bigger than 6,000 because if we go really any bigger, it starts to become pretty clear. I'm very committed with whatever I have. So I like the size. Maybe 5,500 is the best size, but it doesn't matter all that much. And now the opponent goes all in. So obviously we're calling, right? This is where some people, especially in small stakes games who are afraid of the random times they happen to be beat, they will actually find a really nitty fold. They think, oh, the guy check raised me and re-raised me on the flop. He must have the nuts. Now I fold. I wanted to find out where I was when I, with my ace queen, and now he told me. And look, the idea of I'm going to find out where I am by putting in a lot of money and then folding is not a good strategy. In those scenarios, you're much better off just calling your opponent's flop raise and then not folding, right? Do not think that you have to put half your stack in and then fold. That is a big mistake. Obviously, if your opponents are... I mean, the only time it makes sense to put in like half your stack and then fold if your opponent jams is when your opponents will run all sorts of insane bluffs for like half their money, but then if they put in all their money, they only have the nuts. And think about that exact type of player, someone who runs insane bluffs for a lot of money, or you know, some money, a pretty good, decent amount, but never runs a bluff for all their money. That kind of person doesn't exist all that much. Usually people who bluff a lot, bluff a lot across the board. And usually people who are generally tight and straightforward uh, in a particular scenario are often kind of straightforward in general. 
Maybe that was not necessarily true. Some players are like kind of loose on the flop and loose for really small bets. I mean, I'm, I'm really loose for small bets. But whenever lots of money goes in, I do tend to have it. But what I'm trying to say is that you need a very specific type of player to re-raise this flop and then fold to the jam. But that's, that's not the plan, right? The plan is never to fold this hand. Whenever you have a hand that's near the top of your range, your goal is to get money in and definitely to not fold it. So anyway, we get it all in. Opponent has the king eight. King of spades, eight of hearts for the old um, king eye flush draw blocker, which doesn't make a lot of sense at all. If the opponent's getting it all in with king eight, clearly the opponent's just insane. Uh, whenever you do get jammed on here, I expect to be against a reasonable flush draw a lot of the time, maybe four three. I think both those hands would have been reasonable. Um, stuff like this is completely ridiculous. And this time we managed to hold up. It's always nice to have your opponent just completely punt it to you. If you do find that you are a fighter, you're someone who gets in there and battles and blasts your stack off on a regular basis, that might be fine if your opponents are all nits. But as you move up in stakes, as you play against people who will not fold anything reasonable, and also when you're playing against players who will get in there and battle with you, especially if they know how to battle, I'm well versed in battling in poker, um, you have to be a little bit more cautious. You can't just be getting your stack in anytime you want to. And, and you will find that there actually are some maniacs out there who literally have their stack in almost every hand. They can't help themselves. So your job is to get them to want to play pots with you and then don't fold when you make good cards. And here, Ace Queen is clearly great. So that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you want my um, full explanation on how to play the flop, the turn, and the river, pre-flop, everything, <laughs> go to pokercoaching.com slash premium. I have over 130 minute classes explaining very specific scenarios. We discuss how to play against maniacs and nits and we discuss how to play from the small blind and three bet pots and the small blind when everyone folds to you, et cetera, et cetera. There's tons and tons of content there. Also my cash game course where I go through when to bet and how much, which really if you think about it, is all there is to poker. If you know when to bet and you know how much to bet, you win, easy game. So anyway, you can check that out at Poker Coaching Premium. Thanks to Poker News for putting out this video for all of you, and thanks to all of you for watching. Good luck in your games. Have fun. Enjoy yourselves. And I'll talk to you next time.